guide you through the process of plotting a less than cumulative frequency curve, a crucial tool in statistics for visualizing data distribution. I will also demonstrate how to use this curve to identify key statistical measures such as quartiles, percentiles, and deciles. Let's get started. I'm going to use this example for all my explanations. The following is the frequency distribution table of the marks scored by candidates in an examination. So we have the marks in percentage and the frequency. So two candidates scored from zero to nine, and from 10 to 19, we have seven candidates. From 20 to 29, we have eight, and so on. And for the A part of the question, make a cumulative frequency table and use it to draw the cumulative frequency curve for the distribution. For the cumulative frequency table, we need two more columns. Here we have the cumulative frequency. And to generate the cumulative frequency, we have the first frequency here, two. So we repeat it. And we add two to seven, that will be nine. Nine plus the next frequency, eight will give us 17. 17 plus the next frequency, 13, will give us 30. And 30 plus 24 will give us 54. 54 plus the next frequency, 30, will give us 84. And 84 plus the next frequency, 6, is 90. 90 plus 5 is 95 and 95 plus the next frequency 3 is 98 and 98 plus 2 is 100 so this is how we generate the cumulative frequency or you repeat the first frequency and you add it to the next one 2 plus 7 9 and the next one, 2 plus 7 plus 8, 17. The next one, 2 plus 7 plus 8 plus 13, 30, and so on. And for the next column, we have the marks less than. This is a less than cumulative frequency curve. We also have the more than cumulative frequency curve. But in this video, we are going to focus on less than cumulative frequency curve. That is why we have max less than. And how do we get a max less than? From zero to nine is a class. And the smaller number is the lower class limit. The bigger number nine is the upper class limit of this class. When we move on to the next class, the smaller number 10 is the lower class limit. The bigger number is the upper class limit and so on. So to get the mark less than, we pick the upper class limit of this class, the first class, and then pick the lower class limit of the next class. The difference between them is one, that is 10 minus nine. And also the difference between the upper class limit of this class and the lower class limit of the next class, that is 20 minus 19 is one. For the next one, 30 minus 29 is one. 40 minus 39 is one and so on. So we divide that one by two getting 0 0.5 and we are going to add that 0 0.5 to all the upper class limits of each class to get the mark less than so we pick this 
upper class limit 9, we add 0 0.5, we have 9.5. The next one, 19 plus 0 0.5 will give us 19.5. The next one will be 29.5. The next one, 39.5. 49.5, 59.5, 69.5, and 99.5. So that is how we generate the max less than. It is also known as the upper class boundaries. So you find a difference between the upper class limit of one class and the lower class limit of the preceding class and divide the difference by two. Here we have one. One divided by two is 0 0.5. And you add the 0 0.5 to each upper class limit to get the max less than all the upper class boundaries. To draw the cumulative frequency curve, we draw the vertical and horizontal axis. A cumulative frequency curve is a graph of cumulative frequency on the vertical axis and marks less than on the horizontal axis. We choose a scale for the cumulative frequency axis. The biggest cumulative frequency is 100 and the smallest cumulative frequency is 2. We can choose a scale of 2 centimeters representing a cumulative frequency of 10. So we start from 0, move to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and 110. And for the max less than, we have 9.5. The next one is 19 .5, 29.5, 29.5, 39.5, 49.5, 59.5, 69.5, 75.5, 89.5, and 99. 0.5 on the cumulative frequency axis each big box has a cumulative frequency of 10 and each big box has 10 divisions so 10 divided by 10 is equal to 1 so each small box on the vertical axis has a cumulative frequency of 1 for the first point we have 9.5 as the max less than and the cumulative frequency of 2. So on the vertical axis, we count two small boxes and put a point there. The next one, 19.5 and 9. So we count nine small boxes, put a point there. 29.5 and 17. This is 10. We count seven more small boxes. 39.5 and exactly 30. Put a point there. The next one, 49.5 and 54. This is 50. We count four small boxes in addition. 59.5 and 84. This is 80, we count four more small boxes. 69.5 and 90. This is exactly 90. For marks less than of 79.5, we have 95 as the cumulative frequency. This is 90. We count five more small boxes and put a point there. 89.5, we have 98. This is 90. We count eight 
small boxes. And finally, we have marks less than of 99.5 and the cumulative frequency is exactly 100. So we put the point there. If we join all these points with straight lines, then we have a cumulative frequency polygon. But that's not what we want. If we join these points with a smooth curve, then we have the cumulative frequency curve, also known as the ogive. And that is what we want. So we are going to join all these points with a smooth curve. So this is our cumulative frequency curve, also known as the ogive. Be part of the question. Use your graph to estimate I, the median mark. From the graph, the median mark is the mark corresponding to half times sigma f, that is the total frequency. How do we find the total frequency? You either add all the frequencies or you pick the last number on the cumulative frequency, that is 100. That is the total frequency. So we find half times the total frequency, which is the 50th item on the cumulative frequency axis. So we want the mark corresponding to the 50th item on the cumulative frequency axis. So we draw a horizontal line from 50 on the cumulative frequency axis to meet the cumulative frequency curve and project it vertically on the marks less than axis. For the marks less than axis, we have 19.5 minus 9.5, which is 10. So that each box is equal to 10. And 10 divided by 10 is equal to 1. So each small box on the marks less than axis is equal to 1. Here we have 39.5 plus eight and a half more boxes. So we have 39.5 plus eight and a half, which is 48. And that is the median mark. B part of the question, we are going to find a lower quartile. From the graph, the lower quartile, also known as the first quartile, is the mark corresponding to 1 over 4 times the total frequency, that is 1 fourth times 100, that is 20 feet item on the cumulative frequency axis. So we locate 25 on the cumulative frequency axis. That would be between 20 and 30. Draw a line, horizontal line to meet the cumulative frequency curve and project it vertically to meet the marks less than axis. And this falls on 29.5 plus seven more boxes and so the lower quartile is 36.5 for b i i i we are finding the upper quartile and the, the upper quartile the formula is three over four times the total frequency then we trace it on the marks less than axis so that will be 3 over 4 times 100 which is the 70 feet 
item on the cumulative frequency axis so that is the max corresponding to the 70 feet item on the cumulative frequency axis so 75 is between 70 and 80 so we draw our horizontal line to meet the cumulative frequency curve and project it vertically to the max less than axis and here we have 49.5 plus seven more boxes which gives 56.5 and this is the upper quartile for b i v we are finding the interquartile range and the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus lower quartile for the upper quartile we have 56.5 and the lower quartile is 36.5 so 56.5 minus 36.5 is equal to 20 and this is the interquartile range for bv we are finding the semi interquartile range and the semi interquartile range is half time the interquartile range but the interquartile range is 20 so we have half times 20 which is equal to 10 for vi we are finding the 40th percentile and any percentile is given by that number divided by 100 times the total frequency so 40th percentile will be 40 divided by 100 times the total frequency which is also 100 so when we cancel out 100 that will be the 40th item on the cumulative frequency axis so we want the mark that corresponds to the 40th item on the cumulative frequency axis so this is 40 we draw this line to meet the cumulative frequency curve and project it to the horizontal axis and this is 39.5 plus 5 boxes and so the 40th percentile will be 44.5 for VII, we are finding the ninth decile. For decile, to find any decile is that number divided by 10 times the total frequency. Then we locate it on the max less than axis. So the ninth decile, we have. 9 divided by 10 times the total frequency that is 100 that will give us the 90th item on the cumulative frequency so we want the mark corresponding to the 90th item on the cumulative frequency axis so this is 90 we draw this horizontal line to meet the cumulative frequency curve and project it on the max less than axis and we have 69.5 and that is the ninth decile 